What's going down everybody? If you haven't heard, I've got my ebook called Painting Trading Cards by Ryan Paneff out now. If you wanna learn about altered art cards, if you wanna see my process, my tips, my tricks, if you wanna learn how to alter cards yourself, or if you're just interested in the history and the cultural impact of alters on games like Magic the Gathering, head on over to commandercookout.com Pick up your copy today. You'll learn lots. You'll pick up a new hobby. You'll refine your current hobby. And in doing so, you're gonna support all the stuff we do here at the Commander Cookout Media Group. Big thanks. Hey, this is the Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 434. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Gary and today we're gonna talk about some of the headlines from Magic. Now hit our theme song! We're here for our very first whirlwind adventure. How you doing? What is going down? A whole bunch Woo. is going down. We got an explanation to give, a story to tell, some people to thank, a whole bunch of stuff we're going to get into. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs, as well as... Pile of Bones Brewing Co. They're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, as well as being the official beer sponsor for CCO Sidewalk Slam Season 2, right here on YouTube. That was okay. awesome. You got to say some stuff now, Gary. Oh, yes. We'd also like to... This uh, is where you tell them all about the special promo code, which is business CCO Daddy. Summer. CCO... See, I always look up uh, that one. So, uh, the, the CCO special code... Summer, that's the one. CCO Summer. <laughs> Everything you just said that I should say, I just said. <laughs> Saves 5% off all the stuff that you're going to buy anyway. We're but talking... isn't there another CCO promo code too? No, that's the one. That's the only it's one. Just the one. That's okay. just the one. CCO Summer. Oh, wait. Oh, there is one. CCO Perks promo code. We're going to get to that one in just a second. I knew it. Sorry, I got so, ahead of myself. No, no. We're on the track. This I'm is so good. nervous. Keep... No, don't be nervous. This, this is, is so great. Fun. Everybody's going to be totally down it. with this. I love it. So CCO Summer, you're going to save 5% off. All the magic singles that you're going to buy, all the magic sealed product if you live within the country of Canada, all of the board games, sleeves, deck boxes, what else do they have there? Dice, play mats, they have some of those like gaming dice rolling towers and trays and stuff. Ooh, if like you that. need it for gaming, they got it. You can save 5% off of it with CCO Summer. And if your order ends up being over 100 Canadian dollars, that's about 15 USD you can use CCO perks to get a 10% store credit kickback for your next That's what I was order. Talking about. Yes. And, you know, you're just going to spend less on the shit that you're going to buy uh, anyway. anyway. That's it. And it helps the show out. And you know what? If you buy something that's on their weekly sale, because they have some pretty cool weekly sales at nice. Fusion Gaming as well, sometimes the promo code doesn't work. If you type CCO Summer, CCO Sent Me, or F the whole lot of you guys, JK, I'm sure you're wonderful people, in the note to vendor line. Then they'll know that we still sent you, and it just looks really good for the show. Yes. And, and, and this is, I've never, I don't tell this very often, because Ryan sometimes gets angry at me. Sometimes, if you ask really nice in the note to seller thing, like, if you, like, could you please draw me a chicken or a frog? Oh, something cool. Sometimes they'll do it. Baller. You know, it's pretty cool. I've got a couple of, and I put them on my fridge. <laughs> I've got a few doodles from the, the shipping people at, at uh, Fusion Gaming. They're great oh. people. See, uh, support them a lot. I love supporting them, and they'll they they seem to to appreciate us as well. I love that they go the extra mile for you. Those yeah. little things, they oh, I it warms my the cockles of my heart. Yeah, that's what makes them one of the biggest retailers in the country. They deserve it, and They're they work really reason. hard for it. Love and you that. know they got to work hard because they live in Winnipeg, and that place is not okay. On like a fundamental level. There's just something wrong there, man. They're the slurpy capital of the world. Slurp? Really? Yeah. Tell me. Tell me about this. What is slurpy capital of the world? What? Like, you know, slurpies that you drink? Yes. With a big straw? Of course. They consume the most slurpies on planet Earth in Winnipeg. You're kidding me. Per year, yeah. What flavor? I don't know. I don't think they went that deep into it. Oh, man, I was going to hope you were going to say hand sanitizer. Well, Because <laughs> that's some Winnipeg shit right there, baby. Man, I'm just... Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Where did, where's Editor Joe live? Hello to Editor Joe, by the way. He lives so, in... So happy to see you on there. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, so he's uh, Winnipeg, guys. So we're just... He <laughs> works... Do you want to say the line this time? You're going to say it this time. I'm going to set you up. Oh, You're going to do it. Oh, boy. I'm Here scared now. This is, this is good. Okay. Editor Joe is our YouTube editor, and he works really, really hard to get the videos out onto YouTube in a 
particular fashion. So make sure that you're a part of the, the crowd. I thought, it was gonna, I thought we were going to do the thing where I say, which you should be. There it is. That was the one? Which you should be. Oh, well, I thought you were. Uh, you're you going to be all to... green and shit? It's going to yeah. be dope. Because Joe does work really hard, and we do appreciate we him. him. He is so much. He is a member of the lost episode of the CCO Sidewalk Slam. So He was there for that. He was there for that. So Joe's going to have to make a special run in here so we can be at the... Here it is. This is the big moment. I hope that our, our boy Phenom on the ones and twos is all over this. We are in the damn studio. That's that's our boy, Producer Gary, right here. Hi. Now we can explain why this gentleman is here. Is that... This is Producer Gary. He is the the head honcho, the the emperor, the king of Dufferin Avenue Media Network, the damn studio in which we record the shows. We're going to have some gameplay footage. He set this whole dream up together. I think it's a really cool place. I hope all of you out there are supporting him. You can check out the Dufferin Avenue Media Network on YouTube. There's lots of really cool stuff going on. This is the man behind it all. He's filling in for our good friend Brian, who is off after having... Leg surgery, because he done broke his leg in apparently the most pumpkin spice way possible, which is playing softball. And the reason I say that is not because it wasn't a horrific injury. Which and all of our yeah. all of our legitimate thoughts and prayers go out to Ryan. He Nasty. recovered from surgery. Yeah. He's doing fine. He's going to be back <laughs> next week. But man, like, I know three people, three freaking people that ended up in a boot playing softball this season. I got one too. What is so that's four between us? Like what's but going he went on? he went shoulder though. He broke his shoulder. Well, he wasn't in a boot then. No, but that's he got weird. hurt playing slow pitch. Damn, man! Like, is this a getting older thing? Yes. Is this a is it a trying too hard thing? In network Ryan's case, yes. You think because he was sliding in cleats. I've never <laughs> played pitch. like rec sports with equipment before. Yeah, dude. Man, it's... like. I got kicked out of the Rutgers batting cages once because I refused to wear a helmet. Yes. Like a man. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going ah. to. And if anybody should be worried about getting hit in the head, it's me. Mr. Conkey. Right? Like, oh, That's man. Right. I figure I get one more and I'm just going to forget who I am. I'm this close to making you wear a helmet all the time. Oh, man. I worry about that beautiful brain of yours. Right? Like, it's, it's the bad. stories. The stories you told me yeah. about your former life as a top-tier wrestling oh, talent. Well, thanks. One of the few guys i know personally in my life that can do backflips off the top rope onto the ground not just the ring onto the ground but when you talk about uh botches or yeah. moves that don't go quite as planned and how you don't remember anything after said botch until like the next day that worries me yep. that's, so that's why we've got to protect that beautiful brain yeah we gotta the, the brain is a thing and you know there are certain health we could man, we could do a whole show about like the health work and the qu the, the answer is yes <laughs> the answer is yes Wear a helmet when you're playing sports. But when you're in a batting cage yeah. and there's a machine that's, you know, you could probably on. get away without it, right? Which, how many miles per hour? Which one were you in? Oh, the freaking softball one. Like the slow yeah, lob. dude. You can lean in with your head and take one of those. Oh, yeah. That's like I could it. take one of those in the dome and probably, well, I couldn't. But the average yeah, average human person could. Probably could. See, whenever I go in there, I always want to be the superstar that goes into the fastest one. It's like 80 miles per hour or whatever it is. And like you can barely see it. And then... I do that sometimes, and sometimes I make a connection. Like, you guys see that one? I almost got it. Oh, hell yeah. You know? But sometimes when it goes really fast, the the treads in the ball spin it so they get in your hand. So I get beamed a lot in there, Ooh. and it's not good. So I could definitely wear a helmet in those ones. But the slow pitch lobby ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, for man. the lobby? Like, no way, man. Tell that guy to kick rocks. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I did. And then he told me to kick rocks. And because Classic. he had... He had the Rutgers shirt on. Mm. I had to leave. Rutgers is the uh, amusement center here in it. Very well said. Great mini golf course. Great little arcade in there, and they got the batting cage, and they got Fuddruckers. Yeah, is it is it the last Fuddruckers in Saskatchewan Might for be. sure? Is yeah. it in Canada? Maybe. Might be. Because some of our I didn't American, even, some yeah, of I didn't American know they had friends, in the states. Yeah, you know you that. guys know about Fuddruckers. So Very if you've good. got one in your town, let us know in the comments because that's a that's a thing. Absolutely, I'm trying to think of uh, the American friends' nicknames. Because everyone's got great nicknames. Oh, yeah. I always go back to nice. Rusty Trump Jones. Rusty Trump Jones <laughs> one is favorites. one of the favorites. And, but he's not but I know American. he's Canadian. Exactly. He's yeah, Vancouver. I was trying to think of an American one. You know what we're going to see? Here we Rusty go. Trump Jones. Yes. We are going to see Rusty Trump Jones at some of the upcoming Commander Cookout events that we will be at. CCO's everywhere, baby. Man, freaking Network Ryan slash our good friend Ryan. He's been... You've been talking for 10 fucking minutes and you haven't done any goddamn podcasting business. You were thinking that too, hey? That's what he's doing. Yep. So... This is us doing the business. So, to business. In a couple of weeks, I believe it's the 14th of September, 
CCO podcast rolls into town. The World Canadian Tour is going to get into Regina. We're going to be there for the face-to-face day of magic that they're having there. I don't know freaking names of stuff. <laughs> Sounds like it's like a memorial. <laughs> but we're going to be there. I believe that we have a CCO promo code if you buy your events oh, nice. package from Face those. to Face. You're going to save yourself a couple of bucks, get some free games, get a neat thing from your boys, Ryan and Brando, or Gary if he's there. I'm sure that they'll he'll come up with some swag as well. Hell yeah. And it's going to be a great time. Following that, we're going to go to our good friends at the Pile of Bones Brewing Co.'s Tap room right up the street. There's pinball. There's good food. We sent Keel and PJ Prokop down there to, like, check everything out. So we have sent spies to you, Pile of Bones, and we know you're legit before we invite our friends over there and we look like assholes because you didn't deliver a good time. But and we, we know, know and we know Keel is the best thing to come out of Regina. Yes. Keel is the number, number one, one export of the city of Regina. Number and two, we wouldn't send him to one. number two. That's right. If we weren't confident that he would walk out of there having a great time. And That's he said it. that he did. So we're really looking forward to, to doing that. The next week after that, uh, Network Ryan slash our good friend Ryan, uh, I assume he'll be mobile enough because he hasn't said to me that this isn't the plan. He will be out in Toronto for Amazing. the face-to-face weekend out there. There's going to be an after party that he's hosting there. And you should all show up, wish him well. I think he's going to have either a boot or a cast. Sign and it. I'm, I'm going to make sure that yeah. everybody signs it because yeah. I think that's going to be really, really cool. And only sign it with wieners. No names, just wieners. Oh, Big, yeah. small, in between, weird, yeah. don't matter. If you Wiener could underline your word with like a little weird, that would be very funny. And I think yeah. that he would appreciate that very much just to go up. Not to give him pity, but to sign in, get in on the joke, and make sure that you know that you're, you're appreciating him and hope that he is going to recover oh. fully and quickly. He is going to be in Toronto the week after Regina. Again, there's going to be an after party with trivia and all that kind of fun stuff. stuff. And he'll be out there in some capacity. I'm not sure if he's going to be sitting games like initially they were planning on having him do. Yeah. But they're going to find some way for him to be involved and go out there, support that, support the show, and have a great time at at an event in Toronto. I wish I could have gone there, but it wasn't in the card. I'll be at the next Toronto one, I'm sure. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Like, he's he's, he's so pumped. I'm pumped for him. And I'm excited. He's going to slow him down. Yeah, he's going to crush it there. Here's the real big one. This is the big one for the year because our good friend Alex would not be swayed from his wedding date. Despite my best efforts, I tried, you guys. I tried really, really hard. CCO, the world tour, alas, will not be making it to Las Vegas this year. But But in November, we will be in the great city of Calgary. Do they have a nickname? Uh, Oh, man. City... That's big in kind of South Central Alberta. Do they have a name? I don't think they do. They got a lot of wind. They got a lot of crazy weather in there. Yeah, well, we're going to be there anyway. Yeah. For the face-to-face tour stop there. That one's going to be a full-on CCO experience. I believe we have enough people. There's the CCO Dude Bros. There's CCO Nationalites from America. Yeah. There's CCO Nationalites coming in from Manitoba. Yeah. There's CCO Nationalites coming in from BC. If you've heard a name on this show, there's a good chance you're going to meet them in Calgary. we got a house. We've got events, we've got all the stuff that you expect, all the accoutrement, but the added good. cherry on the top of this one is it's in a city where we know everything. Now we're, we, we're the ones that know where shit is in Calgary. Yep. And so we're going to show you guys a great time if you come out. If there's no spots left in the house, that's okay. Remember, uh, patreon.com slash CCO podcast gets you into the discord, gets you connected to all the planning for all those events. So get at us on there. And let us know if you're interested, or just if you're coming down to the city, you're interested in coming up. Just checking it out. We'll let you know what we're gonna where we're gonna be at, what we're gonna be doing, and minimally we can stop by, say hi, have a beer, play a game. It's gonna be a really good time. We encourage everybody to come up and hang out with us there. I, th- I feel like this is the makeup for the missing of the Vegas. Correct. We're gonna bring so Vegas that's to, just, just to in Canada. Case, yeah. In case you're wondering how good it's gonna be, just think it's the Vegas, but in Calgary. Yeah, we've all heard the story about how Brando had a. You know, the third triple tequila after I got kicked out of a bar in Las Vegas on Fremont Street. And then my my good friend, sink guy, Gerard Confardi, he helped me get into our Airbnb and sat me down on the edge of my bed and was like, when you feel up to it, you come downstairs. And then apparently, I don't recall this, but apparently I just laid down and in my head I did a sit up. But what had actually happened is I laid down. And then slept for 10 hours and, <laughs> and then, then woke sad. up. <laughs> like the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah. Still in my shoes, still in my clothes. Went downstairs ready to party some more. I was like, oh shit, it's 7 a.m. And then you crack your beer. 
Then I cracked another breakfast beer and, and off, off we, we go. Yeah. So we're doing that again in it's Calgary. Amazing. We're going to bring the fun to you guys. And so much fun. If the, if the madcap drinking and partying isn't your gimmick, of course you're still welcome to come along. There's so much other stuff that yeah. we have going on. You just be like me other. and do the THC. Exactly. Yeah. Or maybe Are, if you want to get real crazy, you can do some of those uh, medicinal mushrooms I hear so much about. I've heard a lot. There's a guy at the EDH&M that's always, that's very up on those. Does, does, does the Phenom know anything about that kind of stuff? I don't think Phenom does. doesn't he's, know about he's that He's the most innocent human being I've ever met, I think. Well, I mean, you can still hear about stuff. That's he's, true. That's he's a very good point. He's a different point. generation than us, so yeah. people say things, tell you things, you know things. Very right? good point. Right? Don't it's ever good. assume people don't know anything. Yeah. You should never like that. assume that just because somebody's not into a, a topic or a subject, they've never heard of it, that's not a good way of doing things. Yeah. Absolutely right. It, how the hell are we going to do a magic podcast if we just assume that our boy Gary doesn't know shit about magic? I think we're about to find out. <laughs> I think that's the average business that we usually uh, have in. We talked about the, the Patreon. Yeah. Network we, Ryan will, no matter what we do, he'll say we miss stuff. Yeah, Network Just Ryan is, hold is it over down us. on us. But yeah, we're trying okay. our best. It's the, first, it's the first time. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Like Just being on the other side of the glass and being out here and just being a part of it. Like it's, I felt so bad when I missed the one cue, even though I have, oh, you know, I, I got nervous. And then I got, oh, oh man, no, my brain went all wonky. Uh, but I'm, I'm back now. I have a plan to set you up for another one later. Perfect. That, I'll be ready we'll, for it. We'll get you through there. So Hell yeah. what else did we wanted to talk about today before we got into the thing? I feel like there's another thing that me and Ryan would normally do, but I can't think of what it is. So we're just going to kind of go Patreon, into what we were... Business daddies. Right. Beer. Beer events beer, coming up. Events. I Thank think, everybody I for I feel like that's here. all of it. I think that's all the business. We are, we're good at this. Up top. Up top. There it is. Okay. I was going to go for this one, but that would have been a hard That would have been. So I had to go left. Yeah. And if you missed, you would have conked me. Oh. And then, and then it would just be After the... my big speech about protecting your head. Yeah, right? With... Oh, that'd be embarrassing. Can we... Let's do a quick aside. Let's do okay. a really quick aside. I love asides. I had, this, I had this talk the other day with some people, and the football helmet, ah. the hockey helmet, yes. the batting helmet, all designed aerodynamically, scientifically, with your brain health in mind. It cushions blows and tries to prevent concussion and head injury, right? Yes. 100%. Very effective. I will never tell anybody to not wear a helmet when playing the sport that has a helmet named after it. Nice. That's How, a great way of wording that. Let me, however, ask you this question, Gary. Gary's okay. a big sports guy, so Love I'm, I'm going to try and... And I am not a sports guy, so we're all going to have a good time as I try and fumble <laughs> sports references in here. Very excited. Bicycle helmets. I feel they are totally useless. And all they're there to do is stop you from getting your head cut. Interesting. What do you think? Because, like, how much money does a hockey helmet cost? A hockey helmet's a lot. It's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Because you can go to Toys R Us and buy a bike helmet for, what, 15 bucks? Yeah. If you have, I guess, maybe not in America you can't because Toys R Us closed. But up here in Canada, you can spend 20 Canadian dollars. And it's got, like, a sweet mohawk made out of yeah. silicon spikes and shit on and, it. Like, shiny stuff so all the cars can see you. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. For 20 bucks, how much good in the, the grand scheme of things is that actually going to do to protect your brain? Not your skull, but your brain. I feel like it's not as much as they would have you believe. I see your angle on this. How could it possibly protect as well as a helmet that's worth the quintuple the amount? Exactly. I see. Well, I have seen helmets that have been uh, in accidents. Okay. And they get cracked, you know, like a blow up crack all over the place. But the people say it saved their lives. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll... But that could also be, I'm sure you can buy a $100 bike helmet. Sure. So maybe there might be one of those cases where the more you spend, the better it is for you. You get what you pay for. Hey? Yeah. So if you get that $5 bargain bin helmet and you go down, it's probably exactly like you say. You might as well just wear a piece of paper on your head. Have a paper bag on your head. <laughs> Helmet on it. It's written <laughs> backwards. No, if you wanted, it would be yellow and it would say helmet, like a no name bike helmet, right? With the, just the eyeballs cut out of it. That'd be fun, hey? That'd be pretty good. Oh, I, like I love that. that. I would like to see how the kid Joel wearing that. He's, a, he's, he's one of our good buddies and he wears a literal paper bag over his head when he I, goes to concerts. I would love to see ugly kid Joel with a yellow bag over his head. I just like how we got to drop a nickname from the other show onto this show. It's pretty that cool. That feels eh? good. That's I love the crossover. Cool. This is like uh, all those crossovers in cartoons that we love so much and in TV. Should we take an opportunity? Let's, let's, you know what? I'm the boss here. Nobody can boss tell me man. what to do. Let's do it. So 
The Dufferin Avenue Media Network. Oh. We're, we're, we're local, but there's lots of entertaining con- content on here, right? There's yeah. oh, movie yeah. reviews, there's sports stuff, there's all kinds of things. Tell the, tell the people of the nation, what are we doing here? Why should people, besides this super sweet backdrop, what is going on here that should draw people in? Why should people check this out? So this is a passion project that we all built. And I say that with you and Network Ryan and Phenom and the rest of our team at the network. And the whole goal of this place is to make the world a better place because I've become so crippled with anxieties from leaving the house that I've tricked all my friends into coming here every day, hanging out, and together we make the world a better place by making people laugh and Basically reminding people not to think about yourself first anymore. we got to get back to the old way of caring about others before ourselves. And I always talk about karma being very real. You do these things, you make the world a better place. And then guess what? One day I'm not going to be scared to go outside. There it is. My goal is to go out there and do this stuff. And we do that through our Twitch stream, through our vocal recording studio, through this very set here, and all the amazing shows that we have on the network. It's just a lot of fun and a lot of positivity. We have a Big line, no dicks, no assholes. We saw that from the Trailer Park Boys. Incredible show. Our uh, neighbors down south might not know it as well, but that's like the main rule for any parties that they throw over at the uh, rec center in town. Right. No dicks, no assholes. And as long as you do that, everyone's happy and everyone wants to make a difference. Yeah, we're copacetic. We're making the world a better place that's one it. show at a time, right? That's it. I love that. So if you want to get involved, again, check us out on YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> There's lots of stuff going on. Go to DufferinAvenue.com. If you'd like to support the network and what we're doing here, it is a, it's a, it's a thing yeah. that we're doing. And if you want to get involved in any way, drop Gary a line. I'm sure he'd be happy. Absolutely. To it. it's, 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 no, cool. it's, this is like literally, and this is the honest truth. The first guy I thought of when I wanted to start this was this guy. Cause he's oh. the only guy I knew that ever YouTube successfully. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and then he introduced me to Network Ryan. So you two were the precipice for this entire thing. Aww. So this thing was built out of CCO. So we're always so grateful to you guys Aww. for, you know, showing us the way as we move forward. Well, we, we would have cool. cool done stuff. it for nothing. And we're, we're happy we could have we could have been here. And we wouldn't be here without everybody who's watching. So exactly for everybody who's watching, should we provide for them? Some Magic the Gathering related content? Yes. This is terrifying because Ryan's just like, OK, you. You bunch of fucks. <laughs> Do you think he's going to watch? I mean, he might not even watch oh, just no, knowing he's... that he's going to be so mad. Oh, no. He's going to watch this for sure. Yeah, I guess. He's probably going to... Remember... Hate watch. No, there's a camera right over there. Remember that time oh, that young yeah. Brooklyn was watching me and Ryan and he was trying to scare us by talking to us and stuff? <laughs> and you guys just got confused. Well, yeah, I thought no it was, was like... scared. I thought Maggie farted and I was like, what's going... <laughs> Why is... What is happening? Never. But so he oh, might be watching funny. us right now. We don't that's know. That's a good point. We don't know. So Very here's... good point. Let's get into it. What I thought we could do is there's a couple of stories going around the kind of social media network, the, the the socials about magic that have been going on. And what I thought would be kind of interesting would be to to take those stories and tell them to somebody who isn't as ingrained in the magic universe as we all are and maybe get a, an outsider's perspective on some of the things that have some people pretty lit up on, on Twitter. Of course, <laughs> people are lit up on Twitter. But also in some of the other communities as well. I noticed it at ddh and I've noticed on Facebook people are talking about it. Because, yes, I do pay attention to those things. Even though people say I think I don't. I'm always lurking around. It's true. So the first item on the docket is okay. big time anniversary. 50 years of Dungeons & Dragons. This year in the year of our Lord, 2024 is the 50th wow. anniversary of one of the like biggest brain games of all time. Great way of saying it. One of the ways that uh, Wizards of the Coast, that owns both Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering, is celebrating is with an additional goddamn Secret Lair Super Drop. For those of us that don't know what a Secret Lair is, that's a limited print run bunch of cards between four and seven cards for between $30 and $40 that you can buy for, in some cases, a boat. Two hours before they're sold out. What the hell? They're, that does not seem very fair. Right Now, the reason that they've gone to doing it in this way is over the last couple of years previous to this, people have complained about shipping times. Because you, you go in on X day and the, sh- the sale goes from X to Y. And everybody who buys in there 
if you get early enough, sometimes the initial shipment will get to you. Sometimes, in, in one case, actually, for me, the secret lair took upwards of nine months to arise at my home. That's not even possible. How does that even happen? I, I know. How? I know. Mismanagement, Gary, is how That's that the happens. Okay. Mismanagement. So what they did was they said, guys, we heard your concerns. All you people that went on and gave us money. money. Hell with you people. We're only printing in limited runs. We've got a specific number of these sets that we're going to print. And that's all we're going to print. And we're just going to send those off. And if you get some, you get some. And if you don't, you can go fuck yourself. Is basically what they've said. I don't like that. I don't like that either. And we've got another another drop that came out. There was, I believe, five. And I've got a funny story. You're going to laugh. I love this already. At, at the, after we're done talking, I'll tell you at the end. So we've got to get to the end of this conversation before I it. tell my funny story. And a lot of the CCO nationalites who have listened to me talk about Brando by Secret Lairs, they know where this is going. Perfect. There's five drops. Two of them, the two that had the most financial worth, the, the cards yeah. that are worth the most dollars if the you sexiest were to go and buy cards. them. Well, maybe not even the sexiest, just the most. No, they actually were the sexiest. Okay. There's a guy named Astrion. It's called Astrion's Thirst. It's like he's like a vampire guy, and they're all like it. the floofy shirt with like the deep V oh, down to his belly button. Old with school all the vampire. Abs, right? Yeah. Right. Very Lestat interview with a vampire, right? Get me Ooh. in there. Like Alucard from Castlevania 3. That's right. Yeah, sexy. And then the other one is Carlash. She's like the, the, like if the devil was kind of sexy but in like a masculine sort of way and that's not that sounds like i'm being a dickhead but like she's a very tough lady she's got she's very jack she devil yes Ooh, okay. yeah so also okay. very but again pretty hot like you know what i'm saying like yeah. these are two the two sexiest layers are also the two sexiest layers sold out within an hour and then two hours so can you buy them individually correct okay so here's my question to you. Yes. In some cases, the argument could be made. For example, Assassin's Creed came out a few months ago, a couple mm -hmm. days ago. Assassin's Creed came out. And maybe the license that Wizards struck with Ubisoft was you can print this image onto a card X times for X money. Oh. Right? Maybe that, maybe that was part of it. And that's why there's a limited number of them. And maybe that's why those were the secret layers that sold out first. <laughs> Something tells me that's not what you think. I, I, I was prepared to accept that <laughs> argument until this drop came Here we out. Go. Because Wizards of the Coast owns Dungeons and Dragons. So why would there be a hard limit on how many they could print when there isn't a hard limit to how much money they could ultimately make? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm a Canadian citizen. And I pay $300 to ship these goddamn things to my house, and they don't arrive any fucking faster now that they've moved to this new model. It's so much money. <laughs> for no service. Right? For nothing. Pay for the ultimate primo shipping service. It will arrive to you before you die, probably. Maybe. Right? Like, it's yeah. just not very I feel good. that. I so, feel that. What do you... Like, as, an, as an outside human, when I tell yes. you these, these collector things that are... Like, they're so hard to get, and people are so frustrated about it. Yeah. What do you think? You know, I feel my first thought is when I think of games that involve inclusion and the type of people that would basically go to bat for each other, you know what I mean? Like you're all part of the same movement of Magic the Gathering. Yeah. And... The second you start listening to one or two complainers, you forget about the majority. And I don't mean like a little majority, like the big majority. Like we're talking like the 95% of Magic players. Uh, you're never going to win. They're all like, I would may much rather have those people be a little bit upset. The ones that demand this, demand that. Listen to them, tell them they're heard. But this is who we're going to focus on because this right here, this 95% of Magic the Gathering players, uh, they got us to this point. So we need to support these people, not alienate them for the couple over here who are screaming at the top of their lungs, why would anyone listen to me? This is rah, rah, rah. And it's not just in Magic the Gathering. It's the whole world, it feels like, is sort of like that. And I feel like that's crept into this incredible community and it makes me sad. It makes me sad too. It like does. just what? 
I mean, I complained lots about it when the one took nine months. Did they give you any explanation for that? No. Nothing. Nothing. Not a, not an iota of, not jack all of shit did they give me. They, but they did arrive. They, they got there in a great big box. I felt good about that one. The shipping's, the shipping on that one, I felt good. That was a, it's a big fucking box. It's worth the 300. I wouldn't go that far. I would not go. And I mean, I'm complaining about it, but like you, like the people in the UK or yeah, South America or imagine. Australia, holy shit. Yeah. I feel so bad for you guys. Yeah. Man. Oh man, it's bad. But I, I think that, that you, you make a good point where the people that were complaining about, oh, it takes too long. I just want my stuff right now. I want it right now. I feel like those people are in a minority when compared to the people that just want the freaking cards. That's it. Like if I'm playing this incredible game, I want to have the same opportunity as everyone else to get whatever they're putting out. That's what I would like. And to cater to these sort of things, to, to rush things or to go in a different direction than you're normally used to, just makes no sense to me. I, I don't know. I don't understand why so many people think it's so important to cater to the very few just because they're screaming the loudest. That really throws me off. Like, you can address the situation, acknowledge it, let them know they're heard, but we also need to move in this direction because these are the people that got us here. Yeah. We need to listen more yeah. to the actual people. Yeah. We're, we're in a world now that where... that makes sense? It certainly does. Yeah. And the world of magic now is... Th the people have gotten wizards of the coast to a point where we're in a... <laughs> Like a, the glut of product coming out, and they're they're making it so even the people that want it can't buy it. That's the and, that's that's the biggest. Problem. And and I don't I don't think that's okay. Like if if Gary said next week, Yo Brando, I want to get into magic. I want to build my first deck. Let's do it. I want it to be like I, here's the stuff I want for it, etc. And it's like, oh man, all that stuff came in that last secret layer. Oh, oops, can't have that. I'm sorry. That would piss me off. Because they don't have the... A new player coming in doesn't have the depth of collection that somebody that has been playing for a long time. I am very privileged in that I've been playing Magic for 20 years, and I've got all the shit, right? All of it. From, maybe not all, but Damn I can... Near. I can build almost any deck I want and spend zero dollars, and I'm very, very, very fortunate in that... I've been playing for a long time. I bought lots of stuff during the lull when Magic wasn't very popular. And now, because of this show and the, the fantastic fans and listeners and members of CCO Nation, I am living in a thing where we have sponsors that will help me continue to play this game to keep up with the product releases. But somebody like a Gary, or like most of the people listening to this show, they don't have that. So I, I, I think that it's a, a disservice to the community when... Because a few people said, oh, it took me four weeks to get my secret layer. You're holding that up against somebody that's like, man, like, I, I really want these cards, but I can't afford them or I can't find them. That's and, the and here they are. And you could pay 30 bucks and have them shipped to your house in four weeks. And, like, I think that it's doing a disservice to the community to not make these more available to other people. And not just that. It's a disservice to the actual game itself. Because you are the one who gets those awesome, amazing cards, and I'll never have a chance to get them myself. Yeah. So I will never be able to compete with you in any game because you had more money or yeah. you had the complaining or you did whatever it was so you could corner the market on these cards that I would love in my deck, but I'll never have an opportunity to put them in there. And, it's, and that is the thing. And it's not fair, man. I don't like that. It is not. And I w we do stay here on, here on the nation. Amount of money spent on a deck doesn't necessarily mean it's amazing. Yeah. But there is a point where I just, I want these things and I can't, not even that I can't afford them. I can't find friggin' them. find them. That's the biggest issue. Because there's yeah. a finite number of them. When you get a really cool reprint that people want for casual stuff and it only exists in this very, very limited product, it kind of sucks when you can't just can't just have them you know what i mean here's a wild question for you sure would i be able to uh take just a normal card and get an artist like uh, our good friend ryan uh, no to paint it up as or is that cheating because that is put brash taunter on there and then oh, it won't be legal man. if you had a lanwar elf and you had a brash taunter painted on the lanwar elf that is cheating 
Okay. You are not allowed to do that. I, but, I was 99% sure I just wanted to confirm. But if you want a brash taunter that has a picture of Gary on it, you could contact our good friend Ryan or go over to our Facebook auctions site. Every Thursday, there's new pieces up there that really helps Ryan out. It helps the nice. show out. It's a great thing to do, and it lets you express yourself and do some really cool stuff through the medium of art mm -hmm. if you are like me and you have no talent and can't paint cards on your own. Oh, and, ooh. oh, you're going to do it? You're going to do it? You're going to do it? Okay, here he goes. If you do want to learn how to have some artistic talent, you can go on over to our website, commandercookout.com, and you can buy, get, uh, not Gary, I'm I've so already close. replaced I him. I haven't written any books. I've already <laughs> replaced him. Ryan's book, which is available, that will actually it's walk you so good. What, print, uh, painting your own cards, altering your own it's stuff. Amazing, and he has like a, a bunch of his cards that he's personally yeah. done. He had to reach out to people that he had painted for, and they sent him the copies. Like it's an incredible ebook. I keep bugging him because I want a hard copy on here for the set. I do too, but uh, apparently it's a little bit tough to do that transformation. So he's like, unless if it's only you, I, I can't really justify it. So if we get like a bunch of people like hard copy it, bro, hard to, copy it to print it. one. It is a lot. It, of course. It's I get very it. much to print Just, one. I don't to print like a it. bunch. I want a copy right I, here. I do too. Cause it's easier to have one like on an easel while you're like painting. You can look there. over, right? You can reference. I don't want to reference Obviously. my phone. The thing keeps turning off. <laughs> And they tell me that there's a way to stop the phone from turning off. Uh, there isn't. I, I was told that too. I think that's horse shit. It doesn't work. I don't it think is. that's real. Nope. I don't think that's at all real. Absolutely the stupidest lie ever. There it is. That's it. Secret By the way, story. how awesome are all these shows up here that you see behind us? We have a ton of really great shows on the Commander Cookout so media good. group at large. we got Mac and Commander History. I know that yes. Ryan's been recording lots of stuff with him. I forget what he told me the new... The new episode coming up is Treasures. Yeah. Is the new one they're, they're doing. There we go. That's it. The one showing on the screen behind bite us size. right now. I love how they're bite-sized. So such <laughs> a cute. That's one of my favorite posters that we got. Yeah. That's uh, Commander Munchies, Munchies with yeah. our boy, super tall, all killer, no filler, Miller. chiller, Miller. So he does good. the bite-sized chunks of the Magic the Gathering story for the current set in 60 seconds. So good. With pictures and animation. So very, very cool. Good what on more him. do you want? We've also, if you're into more CDH content and actually getting better at playing Magic and not just being entertained wildly by the main show. What does CDH mean? Competitive EDH. Competitive? EDH stands for Elder Dragon Highlander. Right? Nice. Yes, we, maybe, we, I don't think we've actually... I've never this learned this. Show. Elder Dragon Highlander means uh, Elder Dragon... We're like the first kind of, remember on the, if you watched the CCO pre-show this week, I explained to Gary where Commander came from. Yes. Elder Dragons were a group of cards from pretty early in Magic's history. There's, okay. a, there's five of them. And then later on, they printed five more in a set called Planar Chaos. And the Elder Dragons are like these big, stupid creatures that got played absolutely <laughs> nowhere. And they're the kind of cards that, EDH was built around like these big dumb idiots that are fun and if I could just build a deck to make this card work that's the the origin of EDH do they look super sick though or do they look some, dumb like you some say? of them are very cool okay. some of them look pretty stupid but it that's artistic talent and eye of the beholder business I actually really like the old ones because the pictures are so kind of derpy right derp, 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 derp. like one of them is like a steak head going <laughs> and it's just what the what the fuck? Right? As an as an outsider, I gotta say, I love the artwork of these cards. Like Hell it's yeah. as a guy who knows nothing about it, just whenever I watch and I see them pop up on the screen, thanks to Editor Joe, it's like they look so sweet. And then when you guys explain them and what they look like, even when you listen audible audio only, audio yeah, only, audibly, like you describe them so well, it's like yeah, this one. Huge knockers. This one, well, yeah, that's like a <laughs> big horn down there. Like all this cool stuff that like helps you visualize them. And then if you watch it on the YouTube, you can see them. And it's yeah. very cool. Yeah, we'll Love the artwork. Sorry, should, I totally derailed you there. But should people be watching on YouTube? Yes. There we go. There. See, we, we, we got you. Got me there because I was like, which you should be. Would have been weird. No, but you. Yeah, you got I, I nailed it. I I figured we're you flying right now. You bro. would catch that very well. So that's where the that's the E D in the E D H. Elder Dragon. And H is from Highlander. And or the movie Highlander. The yeah. movie Highlander? Yes. Get out of and, here. And there can only be one. There can only be one. Holy and that's shit. why you can only okay. have one of any card in your deck. Right? Dude. And then the oh, C. That makes so much sense. So it's like capital E, capital D, capital yeah, H, C small C at the front, and C stands for competitive. Those are the people that build their decks to be, I don't want to say degenerate. That's the word that we use. But like, they're, they're the ones that they tune the deck to 
do the thing. And the uh, in a lot of cases, I can't say all, uh, John from Gemstone Mine, also Bingo. on the Commander Cookout media group here on YouTube, could tell you more about that. But, like, they kind of put the aesthetic and themeness of a deck aside and replace that with just, I want my Rube Goldberg machine of a deck to win games. Love Rube Goldberg. That's what I want. Whereas other people would say, okay, I want this deck to be nothing, but people holding books is a really popular one. Dude, people that, with no hair or whatever. That right? leads into my next question. Okay. When you talk about certain deck build types, like say a hug type. Gr group hug, yeah. Group hug type or those certain things. How many different sort of labels are there for those? In, like, is there a bunch of them? Oh boy, yes. Okay, so yes. yes. And uh, who makes them up? Um, Who's the, like, the community at large typically, and then they can name it themselves. Yep, perfect. If, if That's you, what I was hoping. Yeah, if you make a deck, you can tell us what it is, and it will typically fall into a, a category of some sort. Okay. Like there, there's, I think there's basically four main super categories. There's an a, there's an aggro deck, which is an aggressive deck that focuses on I'm going to make creatures and beat you to death with them. That's Sounds what, like when you like. That's what I like. To yeah. Play. <laughs> I the, <laughs> then there's control decks. Those are ones okay. that typically revolve around preventing your opponents from doing whatever their thing is. Ah. That. So say you want to go aggro, control deck would say, I see your aggro and comment them down. Yes, exactly. Cool yeah, it down. You, okay. You'll play less dudes. They I don't know why I was fanning your wiener on that no, one. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's very warming. Whenever that, I think about monsters, that's the first place I go to. That dumpster fire we were sitting in front of yeah, before is so still hot. burning over there. It's a big deal. <laughs> Someone should have closed the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a control deck. Okay. So they kind of control the flow of battle until they can do whatever they do to win, okay. which is in a lot of cases a combo, which is the next nice. thing. And a combo deck is a deck that is designed to do... I'll say one thing really well, where the goal is to go from I'm setting my stuff up to I have assembled all of my pieces and you all lose. It's pretty smart, right? Like, <laughs> I do enough damage to kill all of you. I play enough yeah. spells to do whatever. That's a combo deck. Love and it. then in EDH, there's another type of deck called a Voltron deck, oh. which revolves around killing people with your commander card. So it, the deck focuses almost entirely on taking that creature that you always have access to, making it as big and scary as possible, and killing people with it. Is that where the Voltron name came from? Making it big and scary? Yes. Like That's Voltron, so cool. where all the lions go together yeah, like a big robot. so cool. It's same it was, kind of gimmick. Yeah, like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers before the Morphin Power Rangers. Exactly. Yeah, and, in cartoon and, form. And from there, of course, there's a bunch of like subcategories. Group Hug is in there, and like, yeah, well, Stacks, and goblins and all that shit they all kind of just go in so with that hug deck that you guys had and you were talking about how you play with those decks so is the point of this one specifically to help everyone at the game and you just don't try to win is that what a hug deck is that's what people tell you they are but Ooh, as people have you don't uh, sound like as, you well, believe that i don't believe group hug exists interesting i don't think that they're real decks i think that they're they're sneaky <laughs> political machines because Ooh. Uh, more than anything, <laughs> Commander is a very social format, which is another reason why it's so popular is because, yeah. and CCO Nation can attest to this, where you're going to sit down with your buds, you're going to drink a beer, you're going to drink a pop, you're going to have a good time for an hour and a half or so, right? Like the Sidewalk Slam? Exactly like Sidewalk Slam. So excited for those. That's, Just saying. that's the point of the, that's what Commander is there for in general is the feel that lots of people get and that's why it became so popular and is it the biggest absolutely game type yeah oh yes yes so we're the gonna, 60s and the yeah. 40s they don't come yeah. around we're okay. gonna talk about that here in a, in a couple of minutes sorry I, keep, I have so many questions i'm oh, curious like a cat yeah, i like that it's good <laughs> and so uh what the what the hell were we even talking about we were talking about hug decks hug decks yes are a i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna say now right? you think they're a conspiracy <laughs> i'm gonna put it right here i think that there's aggro control voltron combo and political decks and i think that the political deck is the group hug deck that it tricks you into thinking it's helping you when really it's not it's like here here's all these rocks you can throw the rocks at your opponents and they'll die and then me you're like oh yeah i got all these rocks and start chucking and then they pop a hole in your boat and you got all these rocks and you sink that's what group hug is about. sabotage 
it's it's very and they do that not by the quality like of this. their cards or what their cards do their they do it they with talk. their them yeah. sitting at a table convinces dude that's so you crazy so that's another like you said a game style where you do, doesn't really matter what cards you have but more about how you sell them to everyone exactly interesting and there's and the, I like that I think that the lower power you get the more like is it Riz? The, do the kids still say Riz? I've heard that, yeah. No, I heard no, someone say kid, it not too long ago. The more Riz your deck has, the the more likely you are to do better in like the lower power levels. Because you can convince everybody, no, nah, it's just a bunch of things. with Don't Everything with pink eyes is in this deck, lol. And then, you know, everybody's, <laughs> everybody's dead. Whoops. You know, oh, no, I draw a <laughs> doorknob and a sock. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, again now i've drawn Crazy. all your wallets out of your pockets and away we go <laughs> you all just drink the poison i'm taking everything see you later <laughs> that'd be fun crossing here's, it over here's the last and i'm i'm very interested to hear what you think of this story gary this okay. is the one that's been kind of blown up socials the last couple of weeks was toucan sam the card Dude, I saw, was it Never Grind that posted that on the Twitters or on the X? It was. Super cool. Legit, he was on there. I know you guys were trying to get that done for a long time. And we, we got her. My boy, uh, my boy Zach did once. That was, that's very cool. Hold on, hold on. His name's just Zach? It's kind of boring, isn't it? Revelin's like... Light on Twitter. He's a, really, he's a really nice man. If, if you like alter art stuff, Revelin's Light on Twitter. He's a really nice dude. Him and his wife, they do, they do really It just really feels weird hearing someone's normal name on this show. That's yeah, it's, all. It felt, I'll call him Cack. Sweet. <laughs> Way better. It's just real quick. I'll call him Cack instead. <laughs> old Cack. Right, at it old, again. Old Cack. Making the world stuff. a better place. That's what we're all about. That's, that's how we do it. That's it. Better. Better. The air quotes. <laughs> so... Toucan Sam was a card that went into the other formats, the 60 by 4, as I like to call them. We talked yep. about that on the pre-show. Everybody out there, hopefully we all know what legacy and modern and stuff are. And the card just ruined it for everybody because everybody's playing this card, right? Yeah. You're playing Nadu or you got to play something that beats Nadu or you lose. That's what it is. So like just super OP. It's just, it was too much. Yeah. The, it was a design mistake, and Wizards, the, the guys that make the cards, they admitted as much. I love that. By the way, I just want to say a huge prospect because no one ever does that. Oh, but wait. Oh, wait. But I wait, there's back. more. I take it back. In there saying that it was a mistake, they, they showed what the card initially did. Hopefully, Joe can find it and put it on the screen, and you guys can see what, Best the, Joe. see what the card originally was supposed to do. And it was pretty underpowered. They go, who's going to play this? Nobody likes this. But we gotta like let's let's juice it up a little bit so that it'll see like some play and you know the commander guys will really like it. Commander, I think, in Wizards of the Coast's eyes, I think is the casual format. I think that that's where they see Buddy's gonna go to his local game stores. I want to try Magic for the first time, and they're probably gonna get it on Commander because it's the social format. It. Technically, I would argue that it is the format that costs the least actual money, money. to get in on with the lowest skill floor. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you yeah, can draft for, sure. for you can draft for less money, but you gotta be good at draft to actually Under, understand how to get good. To be good at it, yeah. right? Where you can just pay some money and you're good at commander if you know how to play magic. Yeah. With the with the new decks. So they kind of put the overpowering of this card on the laps. Of the commander player. And again, in this arc, we're going to use commanders as the the casual player of a format. Okay. And lots of people kind of came out of the world. Oh, those damn commander players. They're trying to, they're getting catered to too much. And they're getting too many things put on them. And the question that I would like to ask you as a, as a sports person. Because yes. there was a time where Magic was on ESPN. So Amazing. technically it's a sport. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. So... At what point does the governing body of a sport catering to the, in maybe the grand scheme of things, the lowest common denominator, the casual enjoyer of that sport, at what point does the governing body catering too much to that particular segment of the population begin to filter up and start to hurt the big time, the big leagues, the bigs, the the show, the Dude. the the... I can't Those think of any. Of good analogies. I can't think of any other good. sports analogies. I'm sorry. The no, guys that do curling, good. I don't know. <laughs> the Olympics. I don't. 
And I don't oh. know anything about sports. Dude, that was very well. I think if uh, I didn't know you, I would think you were a sports expert. Oh, shit. You really presented that well. Oh, wow. Thank you. And uh, this goes back again to listening to the 1%, the 5% of people that are yelling the loudest. And in every sport, every like pro sport, like the big four, you got basketball, football, hockey, baseball. And all four of those, there has been so much catering to the few and, and just ignoring the many. And it's, I truly believe it's because of the world that we live in. Like it's everything I just said before applies here as well as in like in hockey, for instance, you go back helmets. We talked about helmets. Before. Yeah. A couple of people complained, Oh, you can't be, uh, can't be wearing, uh, or you, had, you should be wearing helmets. And yeah. it took them a long time to finally put helmets on hockey players heads fighting. In hockey, here's a perfect example. Yeah. Every single person outside of the sport says fighting has to go. It's barbaric. It has no place in the sport. If you, and this has been proven because they've sort of done like a mini sort of survey of this, but if you were to talk to the majority of the NHL players that are actually in the game with the fighting, the only people that it affects, every single one of them wants fighting in it because they understand that it's a deterrent Deterrent? Deterrent. Deterrent. Deterrent for the cheap shot artists. It keeps everyone in line. If you go and smack my friend Brando in the head with a stick, oh, yeah. guess what? I'm going to come after you, bro. And you'll never do that again. Yeah. They can't do that now because they've taken fighting out of every level, I believe, except the NHL. The NHL is the last one holding on to it because the players oh. want it there. But you have the entire world around them saying, you can't do that. You can't. Could you imagine telling someone they can't do something when that person telling you doesn't have anything to do with the game. Nothing. No. They're just outside yelling, hey, you can't do that. No. No. <laughs> don't do that now. Like, it makes no sense. No. And you can find examples of that in all of these sports. So, do you think, taking that example. Yes. The NHL. That's, this is a good, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I feel really smart. My brain sports is guy so Brando. big. The NHL is trying to eliminate fighting, not by eliminating it from the rules, but by eliminating it from the upcoming players who learned. Oh, look at Margaret. She's waking special up. Special cameo. She's so cute. <laughs> the up and coming players will have learned to play hockey without fighting. And there will be a point where all of the NHL guys that want it have retired and moved on. And now all Dude. the players that have come up, they're now there is no fighting because everybody learned hockey. With Without no it. fighting. So now do, you're getting it. Would you, run around. would you suggest that maybe, maybe Watsi has had enough of these, these legacy players and these modern players always the push and yell without telling you. Always, yeah. You think that that's the, that's the Dude. gimmick. They're trying to turn all magic into, cause they've already turned all magic into commander. Ma they've already done that. And do you That's think so that and I don't want us to I don't want us to be conspiratorial here? Of course. But w would you say that maybe this is like pushing the limits a little bit? Like maybe Dude. if you just because here's here's the thing. This is the and this is real life. If you're a modern player, and I feel so much for the modern player who goes out to build a deck that's not cheap. Building magic decks is not cheap, yeah. especially if you're trying Ooh. to compete. Okay, that's that. This is buying new hockey. This is hockey equipment yeah, level. Great. This is and the analogies are on fire right now, bro. Big dollars, and then it gets banned out from under them. So now you've spent x hundreds of dollars on doing this, and now you have. Now you've got rectangles of shitty cardboard that nobody not, but the commander nothing. players want. Oh. So do you think that they're just like they have these little frustration moments? To not incentivize people to not play modern, but to say, hey, man, like, it's a game of balance. Sometime we make mistakes. Oops. And then... So greasy. Eventually, people it's that... So greasy. ...enter Magic by playing Commander are just going to say, you know what? I don't want to... They're going to see what's... Oh, man. Yeah, they don't know it that way. Yeah, my, my cousin just played Nadu and he got all banned out. And now he's... You know, he took out a second mortgage on his house and he just sold me all his Nadus for a buck and a box of cereal. Okay. Right? Like, do you think that... Oh, I... Could you... you see, do, does, that, does that sound legitimate or does that sound like me being insane? 
Like, am I being insane right no, now? No, you are not. You opened my my entire brain on this. It almost hurt. Oh, shit. My brain doesn't I'm like sorry. to work very hard. When you said, is this sort of the plan without telling you the plan? Another great example, going back to hockey, with the helmets, they have the grandfather in clause. Okay. So if you wore a helmet before this time, then you can wear your helmet for the rest of your career. Okay. So that's why... Or you, you don't have to, sorry. Okay. So the reverse. So if you didn't want to wear a helmet, okay. when they said you have to wear a helmet, it was fine. But anyone else after you has to wear a helmet. So okay. that's why you had the guy that Craig McTavish, one of the last guys to play hockey without a helmet when everyone else was wearing one. Looks so badass. Definitely not a smart move, but looks yeah. so badass. Play, wear a helmet when you play hockey. Yes, Again, very please. Important. Very important. But that's, that's sort of the exact same thing. It's like we're going we're gonna to cater to the people that are complaining about this. But we're going to do it in a coy way where it won't be put upon us. So we don't have to deal with the consequences of pissing off the rest of the league. Yeah. Chewing tobacco and baseball, same thing. Chewing tobacco is literally a staple when it comes to baseball. I only play rec sports so I can drop dead right in there. That's what I do. <laughs> I, I love that. chewing tobacco. And it's from baseball. It's from growing up, watching all those, like Pat Borders, Blue Jays catcher, Eddie Sprague, all these guys, full on, like Pudge Rodriguez, all of my heroes. Huge wad of chew every time. It got me like this. And again, looking back, this is probably why they're making sure they don't do it anymore. <laughs> so the kids don't chew tobacco. So very smart, but they never put it like that. But if you were in Major League Baseball before they said no more chewing tobacco, you're good. Okay. Until you retire, you can still chew. But anybody who came up to the league after that time, that deadline was set, no chewing tobacco. So you'll be sitting there on the bench. Not allowed to have a big dip. Well, I got one in here. Literally, with a camera seeing it. You wonder why you spit all the time in baseball? It's because you're spitting out your chew. That's is what that what that is? Chew. Yeah, seeds are chew. That's how it goes. Is so with that, again, grandfathering it in, they don't want to be the bad guys taking everyone's chewing tobacco away, but hey, these are the rules now. So sorry, kids coming up. You can't have as much fun as the old guys. I think you're definitely onto something. I think that, that could be a Getting thing. the outcome you want without showing your work. Yeah. You just kind of... It's greasy, man. When you control it all the way, I think again, I don't want to sound conspiratorial, but when you control it all the way along the, the when you control the means of production, I guess is yeah. the right. Yeah. Like everybody Absolutely. coming up when they come up with a certain mindset in a certain way, eventually that the, becomes the norm. The old way just naturally falls off. That's it. That's I think and no that, one that's literally how evolution works. And no, nobody, yeah, no one notices their complaints because they don't know what's happening. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's going on in magic, but it could be. Like it's. Maybe it is. I don't know. Because the one of the things that Wizards of the Coast and we're we're running long on time here, so we're gonna be we're gonna be quick. But one of the things. What the hell? I know it goes fast. Hey, no. What, when I'm in there, <laughs> it's so boring. It's so the fast thing. in here. No, it's not boring. It's just like I'm paying attention to everything and I'm trying to get the good angles, like Phenom's doing. So I know, you know, I'm like sort of in it, but I'm not really in it. When I'm really in it, it's yeah, just like your show. It goes so yeah, fast. Yeah, man. We're sorry just, to interrupt. That's oh, just like, don't be sorry. I man. ruined just, your flow. You had something really good to say. What, what, what are we talking about? What are we, what are we saying? We're talking about the conspiracy, conspiracy of means people of production. making you think that they're not wanting the outcome that they're actually trying to work towards. But then they're getting it because they're scum. Now nah, they're not scum. They are giving us a game that we love, and that's a thing. But oh, I remember what it I was. I knew it was going to come back. Wizards of the Coast doesn't acknowledge the secondary market, which is the, the, the game stores, the singles, when you trade cards back and forth with your friends, right? Yeah, they don't, you're LGS. Yeah, exactly. I learned that. Thank you. They don't get a cut of that, really, right? So when it, in the long run, in a, in a format like Legacy, which is very, very expensive to play in, all old cards that are very difficult to get, that the, the, there's an agreement where WotC will not reprint those cards ever again. So what exists on Earth right now is That's what exists. Crazy. Right? Yeah. And that's where that's where some of the crazy values come from. That's, that's why it, there's it, cards that are worth thousands of dollars. See, I get that. Rarities. Exactly. Legendary drops. Exactly. Precisely. And Nerd so, note. but when you have like a big format like Legacy, they probably don't pay as close attention to a thing like that as they should because the only time they make any money on it is when a Nadu comes out. And all the legacy and modern guys are like, holy shit, I can win goddamn tournaments with that. And then everybody runs out and buys it. That's the only time they make money off of a, uh, and it, what they're called eternal sets. Because they're, they're just, they're, there for they're unchanging, right? Yeah. And unless they inject something into it to shake it up, they don't make no money off of it. Whereas 
a format like Commander is much, much easier to just print things into because pe somebody's always going to want a scarecrow. Somebody's always going to want the raccoon guy. Is that or, because it's right? 100 cards instead of the 60 yeah. or the 40? And, and it's designed around doing whatever you want and being creative yeah. and just the, the, all the frogs in Bloomboro. I, I got lots of frogs. Just, Glarv! I got, I, go, there you go, Glarv! Glarv! I'm not going to play any of them, well, except for Glarv. I play Glarb yeah, and Helga. I play Glarb and Helga. But like, I have them because I think they're awesome, right? And there's lots of other people out there that collect cards just based on that. So there's there's a lot more wriggle room when you're going after people that are, you're trying to inspire them their, them to be excited about a thing rather than trying to get them to get a game piece that fits better into an established strategy, an established meta of strategies. Right, it's a yeah. lot easier to put shit into that, or into the oh, the casual stuff, yeah. than right. So maybe that's why they do stuff like this. I don't know if if you out there have any kind of comment on that. Please let us know down below because I'd love to know what other people think. Like, is this? Am I being insane? Like, am I am I asking Gary crazy shit right now? I don't feel like. Am you I are. dragging him directly down the rabbit hole, and we're gonna drink a little potion, and then one of us is gonna get tall, and the other one's gonna get short, oh. and the tall one's gonna cry, and the little one's gonna have to jump in a bottle and float around until he finds a keyhole, so that they go out of the rabbit hole, and then they're gonna find a rabbit with a watch, and somebody's gonna try and cut off our freaking heads. I'm into all that as long as we can switch wieners. No, damn it. No, I'm keeping mine. I I really like mine. It's I just want a good one for once. You'll be you're fine, Gary. Dude, I got the network Ryan wiener. It's tiny. Well. Shouldn't say that on TV, I guess, hey? Yeah. Just jokes. I'm, I'm like this guy. <laughs> Network Ryan, though. Tiny. Network Ryan's a great guy. Great guy. And we, we wish him very, very yes, well we in so his post-op recovery. This is what happens when you're uh, out there, bud. So yeah, when better you, get back soon. That when Brando and other Brando are in the <laughs> chairs, Brando. this is the kind of stuff you get. So Hell yeah. We, if you're still here, we really appreciate everybody hanging thank in you. there. I want to thank Gary and the oh, Duffer and Avenue you, Media for having us here. So much fun. Yeah. I guess, like I said, it went by way too fast. I felt like we were just getting rolling, and now we have to leave. And now we got now we got to go. Maybe That's we'll sad. get to do it again sometime. We'll see how good we did. What the people so. think. Let us know how we did. And if you want to see more of us, we are going to start. We've had a few uh, requests on the Discord. The streams are coming. We are going to oh, do yeah, some battle battle Toad Toad stream on the damn Twitch yes. channel. So check that out. Media on Twitch. Yeah, we're going to we're going to be at that. It's our next thing later. on the list. The <laughs> summer's just been so yeah. damn busy, and Ryan's hurt, and like got yeah. weddings and. Once Funerals we're back in routine, we're going to be all over that Twitch streamer. Phenom's going to be on there. We're going to have a bunch of people rolling. It's going to be into it. fantastic. If you love video games, which I'm sure you do, that's where to go. We're your place to come. Hell so yeah. thanks to Gary. Thanks to all you for listening. Thanks to Phenom for sticking in extra late. Yeah, and making sure that our show Overtime today, bro. Good. Well done. <laughs> and we're going to be back. And we'll probably talk about maybe some cards, maybe some sets. Who the hell knows what we're going to be up to on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Yeah.